basically, yeah, I had different colored hair, but that's... When I was younger, specifically in college days, just to zoom in there, I was not a very good student. I was okay, I did pass my classes, and I did fine, but I didn't really enjoy classes. That, that was not my thing, so to speak. It's still not my thing. Keep in mind I have a master's degree, but it was a difficult one to get. But when I was in college, I was very, very active on looking at finding anything outside a classroom. I was busy doing things in Masqat, any forum, presentation, lecture, or anything in between I can attend, I was there. Sometimes it's not, it's not relevant to my classes, sometimes it's way too far from what I do, but I just enjoy them. I meet people and I see ideas and I, I see things and they were interesting. I did some in Masqat, outside Masqat, in Oman, outside Oman, I've done them in almost every continent. And I was most of the time sponsored. I was so blessed and lucky to be sponsored by private sector or governments or sometimes representing Oman in a way or another. Honestly, a lot of these lectures and things I attended are boring. And, and some of them are just really difficult and really boring. But I want to zoom into a specific one I attended in Abu Dhabi. I think it was in 2005 or six or seven, somewhere there. Yeah, maybe four. So I attended this lecture that was absolutely life-changing. It was a very, it was a three-day session. It was a very boring three-day session. <laughs> Honestly, this session was, we were young at the time, so a lot of people just decided to go bowling or went to the movies or just stepped outside to chat with their friends. And I decided, I actually made a decision, which I don't regret now, to stay and fight with my eyes to keep them open. <laughs> and so, one man after another stepped on stage, and most of them are just boring, except this one guy. It's one guy that had an amazing impact on me. Now, unfortunately, I don't remember his name, or how he looks like, or even his slides. I honestly don't. As far as I'm concerned, this is him. But what I remember about his lecture is the title of his lecture. Just, just the title of his lecture. I remember he had zebras and giraffes in his presentation, but honestly, that's all I remember. But the title was really, really interesting. He spoke about something that's really impactful to me. It's an idea that really changed the way I look at things. He spoke about the title that is the title of my book that I will write in the future, hopefully. <laughs> so this is my book. You can pay now if you want. <laughs> hopefully it's coming in the next 10 years, but it's coming. I promise you that. So self-branding is the concept I've looked at, and it was so inspiring. What is, what is self-branding? What, what are we talking about here? It's very interesting to me, and, and I know what branding is. I'm a marketing student. Not a very good one, but I was a marketing student. So, so I asked myself what it is, and obviously branding, if you open your phone, and you Google it, there is like a million different definitions of that. But I have my own definition of branding, and mine is right, by the way. <laughs> branding, or the brand of something, is basically the feelings and perception you have about that specific thing. Let me explain. So you see this car, Toyota Corolla. So you see this car and you think efficiency, family car, great resale value, fuel consumption is great, great agent in Oman, you see all man. You see this car on the other hand, and you think money. You maybe think Ahmed al Hati. <laughs> You think speed, you think safety, whatever thoughts that come to your mind, that's the brand that is established in your mind. Healthy, <laughs> affordable, available, tasty. I'm not going to say bad things, don't worry. Beautiful Amani product, we are very proud of. So that's, that's a brand that stays with you, and that extends not just to products that companies spend money and millions on. It goes on for countries as well. Countries, societies. Think of when I, when I say I'm from Japan, whether you like it or not, you think I'm smart? That's a brand that these guys have. And it goes on for other countries. You trust some areas, you don't trust some people from some areas. And it just, it's just the thing, whether you like it or not, is there. Animals have brands. I don't want to sit next to this guy. Yeah. 
Slow? <laughs> Slow? Beautiful? Cute? Whatever it is, that's a brand that you have, a perception that you have about that specific thing, whatever it is. So the point is, if everything has a brand, according to me, and you have a perception for it, what about us? That's very interesting. What about each one of us? So that, that is the question that I always had. And I dig deep into my book that I would write down one day. <laughs> and I, I started thinking about different things. And I'll give you a simple example here. This is my friend. He's Romani, but he's, his hair is also, I don't know. Anyway, so if my friend wants to go to the airport, he will call me at 11 p.m. Jihad, Come, pick me up to the airport now. He has 10 more friends. He has a family, maybe a wife. He has a lot of other people that can take him to the airport. But this guy believes deep down inside that if he calls me at 11 p.m. at night, I will be willing to go drive down. In reality, I will not, but he thinks that I will. <laughs> drive down, take my car, pick him up from home, take him to the airport at 11 p.m. And he thinks I'll do it with a smile. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make is, he has a perception of me. He has a thought process about me, which makes me think for a minute. What about, are you trustworthy? Can I tell you a secret if you're my friend? And he goes on. Think of, about the million things when it comes to your brand. This is my daughter, Amel. She's young today, but I will, just for the record, her hair is black. <laughs> it's the only picture I could find. So my daughter, Amel, says this statement all the time. And I assure you, she is very, very wrong. But sometimes, she just wants to speak to her mother and not me. And the reason is, she has a perception about her mother. And another perception about me. Her mother will not scream at her, or whatever it is. Now think about that. Think about that for a minute. Think about your kids. Think about how you look at and speak to your kids. I will never ask Talal, my youngest son, to get me some water. But I always ask Emil because I know she will do it with a big smile. Because of the perception I have and the thought process that I have about that specific person. Now when it comes to family and friend, that's all beautiful and all that. That really is very interesting and I love it. But my main passion was the workplace. Think about the workplace. I know you guys are thinking about your brand name in the workplace. That's good, because that's what you should do. Every one of you working in a company somewhere or the other, maybe in office, maybe out of office, whatever it is. But you know for a fact that your colleagues, which you're thinking about right now, they have brands. She will get it done on time. He will never get it done on time. Yeah? He will deliver it on Tuesday if he promises he will deliver it on Tuesday. I will not deliver it on Tuesday. Whatever it is, this guy is always late. That happens all the time. Whether you like it or not, whether you've written it down or not, whether you thought about it or not, it is there. And you always go to this guy. There is always a Muhammad in the department, or a Saeed, or a Salim. But everyone asks, Saeed, Kif, Kif, how to do this? There is always a guy that stands out and that the brand is there, that his brand is there. His boss will always pick up the phone and speak to him first because he knows he will get it done on time. He is someone I can trust. He is someone that is reliable and so on. Now, I can go on about this forever when it comes to work and you can brand yourself in many different ways. But I want to speak about two things, and I don't want to deviate. I just want to speak about two things that I really don't like or enjoy in the workplace. I've seen it in many cultures. I've seen it in many countries. And I've seen it in this market as well. A couple of statements I don't like. This is not my job. It's a hideous statement. We say it all the time. And I know it is not your job. But don't give me just what you can do within your area. Give me a little bit more. I'm not asking you as an accountant to go build a marketing plan for me. But I'm asking you to be willing not to have that attitude at least. Once you think of your brand, that makes a lot of sense. The second statement is, 
I don't know. And all people, some people just love the statement. They just, I don't know. Move on. I don't know. Our grandfather said, I don't know. And that makes sense. Because if our grandfather wanted to know, he had to travel, which was not an easy process at the time, to another country to ask someone who knows. But you cannot say, I don't know anymore. I'm not asking you to have a, an open heart surgery here. I'm asking you to step out of your way, pick up your phone, and learn whatever you want to learn. Photoshop, you can do it. Don't design a building, but know how they're done. You can do it. Think of almost anything you want to do, and you can accomplish it. And you'll be surprised of what you can do if you want to do. When I was driving this morning to this place, I thought about something very, very interesting. I remember something, a book I've opened when I was, I was about 10 or 11. It's, a, it's an exercise book for young kids, like I think three to five or something. And it's a, it's a, the grading system is interesting. The, the book is hideous, but the grading system is beautiful. So it says zero if the child is not willing to look at or learn anything. Five if he gets it 100% right. But then there is one. There is one grade. If the child is willing to listen or explore or even try to understand the question, that's one grade. Which a grade you can easily have in anything you do. So with that, I don't want you to remember everything I've said there, but I just want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. The first one is, and I'm sure you've thought about this already. What is your brand? Are you the Muhammad of the office? Are you the best employee in your department? Are you the best son to your parents? Does your mother call you when she wants milk from the grocery store? Or does she call your brother because you would say, ah. <laughs> Think about it. That happens all the time. Are you the best at what you do in whatever you do? Are you happy with your brand name now? If your company decided to fire 98% of the employees in your company, would you be in that 2% that will stay in the company? Or would you be fired with their advice? Think of your brand. And I, I'll tell you a simple thought before I move on. When you attend a meeting with a sales representative, for example, someone who wants to sell something to you, someone is in need of your money in a nice way. You can be half an hour or one hour late. That's fine if you're an executive to him. That's fine to your employees. But think of the impact that can have on your brand name in his mind. You will be labeled as the late executive mean guy. That's a powerful thought once you put it that way. The second thought is, is what do you want your brand name to be tomorrow? Thank you.